Hey everybody, we're going to learn four ways to move an item around inside of Fortnite when you're making games. So we have five buttons here. One is for reset, one uses move to, the other uses teleport to, the other one uses animate. And then the final one is a sequence. Now the first three, in fact four with the reset button, all use verse. We are here primarily to learn that. And then I'll show you the comparison is what people usually do is use a sequencer but you can do a lot of this stuff with verse. So the reset button puts the boat back. The move to button, if we press this one, will animate the boat along the river here kind of nicely. Looks all right, but it's very linear, right? So we'll reset the boat and then we're gonna go to teleport to, and that literally just teleports the boat to the location that we've set. So we'll reset it again, which is the same as the reset button, by the way. Now we'll use animate. Look at that, start it off. And then it sort of slows down near the end. Let's watch that one more time. It's pretty clean. So we'll animate. We'll step back just a little. We'll animate. It slowly starts off. And slowly stops. That's pretty good. That's what we kind of want, I think. And then the sequencer. We in its exact same effect. You can see there. So let's learn these ways on how to make stuff move around inside of Fortnite. Also want to really thank everybody over on Patreon for becoming patrons. You guys are absolute legends. Thank you for being here. You help make these things happen. Remember that all of the code is posted there. Go get it as fast as you can so you don't have to write it all out. Okay, let's get into this. Okay, we are inside of UEFN. You can see I've got a custom verse device here. I've got my reset button. This is the move to button, the teleport button, the animate button, and then we have the play sequence button along with a sequence device. I'm not going to cover all of these because it's not really important. We're learning how to move things. And the other thing we have is our boat and it is a blueprint. If we take a look inside of the content browser here, you can see I've got a bunch of blueprints of things that are going on in this particular game, which is going to be a tycoon tutorial, but I'm just going to use the boat for now. And here it is. So it's important to remember that you need to turn things into blueprints blueprints to be able to move them. You can't just move a mesh around. So you take the mesh and turn it into a blueprint. Keep that in mind. In our custom verse device here, we can see I've got all of my items hooked up in the details panel. We have our boat, boat sequence, which is the cinematic sequence device, uh, reset button, move to button, all the buttons, obviously. So let's take a look at the verse file to see exactly how I do this. Okay, so here we are inside of verse. We've got our usual usings, which is our importing of libraries. The couple of new ones that we need are the creative animation and the creative animation interpolation types. We also need to do a little bit of math. So I've got the spatial math library in here as well. So without really going into all of the details of how these things are set up, we've just got all these editables here. I've covered this a billion times in the past. We need our sequence device. We need our creative prop, which is the boat. And then of course, all of our buttons. And in the on begin, so when this device is instantiated, meaning that it's on the scene and it starts up automatically when the game starts, so that happens in on begin, we set up all of our buttons to do their things. And their things are down here. And this is what we're here to talk about now. So the reset button uses what's called a teleport to method. And that's available on props, which is a creative prop, which is a blueprint. And so we're going to say boat dot teleport to. Now we have to wrap this in an if statement because it can fail and it is using these square brackets to call it. So it's not like a normal method that uses these curved brackets. We're using square brackets. And then we're going to create a vector three, which is an X, Y, Z object. And we do that with these curly brackets. So when we're using a teleport to, we have to pass in a position and a rotation. So we're doing that with a vector three. A vector three is a math item, and it's essentially just an object that holds an X, Y, Z, three different vectors. And uh, here they are, <laughs> X, Y, and Z. So the reset position is essentially in the scene, it's the boat that is just sitting right inside of the water here. Now you can see that over in the details panel. If we were to right click the location, we can actually copy this. And then if we were to go into here, we can just paste it in and we'll have these values available to us of where the initial position is. So for the vector three, we use curly brackets because we're going to instantiate this object and uh, pass in the values that we are going to use. So the X, Y, and Z of the boat is there. And then we can just use the boat's get transform rotation, the rotation it is at now as the rotation. We don't want to change the rotation at all. So this is how we would teleport the boat back. 
which means that we have now covered the on teleport uh, method as well, except we are changing the position of the X to 2150. And you might say, well, how'd you know it was 2150? And I literally would just take the boat and I would move it along until I thought it was at the position that I wanted it to be at. And then I would go and take a look inside of the details panel where it says a particular number, and that's the number I would put in. So that's this number here, 2150. We don't want to change the Y or the Z. They are going to stay the same. You might wonder also, how do I know it's on the X? Well, I know it's on the X because the little gizmo here is red, and that is the X axis. The green one is Y and blue is Z. Okay, so that's how to teleport items. Now, if you remember when we were watching that, it just straight moves there. It's not an animation. So that's one way to move a thing, but it's not how we would want to do this here. Okay, so the next one we're going to cover is the move to. So the move to button calls on move and on move spawns move boat. When we use spawn to call a method, it means that the method that we're calling is going to take time to do something. So in this case, we're using move to. So we can call move to on the boat. So just like teleport to move to is a method on creative props and suspends is set here because we are going to spend five seconds moving the boat. So the move to method takes a position and a rotation. It can also take a scale, but we're not going to bother with that. Uh, so we want to move it to the same position that we moved it to with the teleport to, except we're going to do that over a period of five seconds. So the time set at the very end of this uh, rotation is obviously the same rotation of the boat that it is now, otherwise we'd be spinning it. It's going to take this much time to get there. So that's how you would move an object with verse with move to. Now, in this case, it's a linear animation. So it starts quick and it stops quick and it just arrives at its location in five seconds. So there's no animation properties that we can apply. While useful, it's not as clean as the next option we're going to use, which is the animation. So we're going to call on animate from the animate button right here. So this is where everything is done for that. We're going to call on animate. Now, this is a little bit more of an advanced way to do things, and it's relatively new to use the animation controller. And I don't see a lot of tutorials out here doing that. So we're going to cover that quickly here. So an animation controller is a lot like using the sequencer, except we're doing it with code, which is kind of neat. Uh, it means that you can do these things dynamically. So if you had a moving thing and you wanted another thing to follow that moving thing, you could do it with code and not in the next way that I'm going to show you, which is the traditional way of moving things around in Fortnite, which is with the sequencer. So with this code, we're going to set up our very first keyframe and I'm going to call it movement keyframe one. And it's a keyframe delta. So we're going to then instantiate that here. The type is keyframe delta. And we then do this just like we do with vector three here, where we instantiate it with these curly brackets. Or if you even want to look up here, we're instantiating the button device with curly brackets as well. So we set the type of the teleport to button and then instantiate it. So this is just a normal thing to do. Really get used to this. So inside of these curly brackets are all of the attributes for this keyframe, which is a keyframe delta type of object. OK, so now that we've covered that, we've got the delta location, the delta rotation. So these are uh, well, the location obviously is the vector three. It's a location just like we set for the move to and the teleport to rotation is exactly the same thing. It's a rotation as well. So we set the same stuff. And in this case, we're also setting the scale. We don't have to, but uh, we're not changing it at all because it's going to stay at one but you can put this in as well. And the delta location, delta rotation, delta scale is relative to the position the object is at right now. So we want to move the boat on the X axis, 7100 centimeters in the positive direction, uh, zero for Y and Z. Why? Because relative to the boat's position that it is now, I don't want to move either of these, but I do want to move it along the X. Rotation is going to stay the same. So I put 0, 0, 0. You can make rotation from yaw, pitch, roll degrees, 0, 0, 0.0 all along the board here. Otherwise, we'd be moving it around a little bit. We don't want to do that. And scale is also uh, a vector 3. I'm going to put to 0. Time is going to be 5 seconds, and we get to use interpolation. So it is a way to animate a thing in and out, or just have it linear. 
and uh, I'm going to do ease in and ease out. Now, if you've used After Effects or Premiere or any other video editing program like I do, then you would know that ease in out is a way to have an animation start slow and end slow. If you use linear, it just literally does the same thing as the move to, but you can also have just ease out. So that means that it's going to slowly start up and then finish. Uh, ease in means that it starts kind of normal, but it slows down as it gets to the end. I want ease in and out. So I put ease in and out. And then we make an animation controller because the boat has one, and we're going to call it boat controller. And then we use these Fort Vader keyframes to set which keyframes we want. So we can actually do a bunch of these. If you wanted your boat to go down a river that is wiggly and stuff like that, you could set more than one of these keyframes and just place them inside of this array of keyframes. So no different than using a sequencer or any type of animation program, we're just setting up the keyframes with code, which is really useful. Trust me, this is a static situation, but you could have a more dynamic situation where if somebody was swimming down this river, you could have the boat follow them. So very powerful. Okay, so then we tell the boat controller to set the animation to the Fort Vader keyframes, which is everything that's sitting inside of this array. And then we tell it which mode we want it to be in. And this, in this case, we want it to be one shot. So do this animation one time. You can also loop it. And I think there's another mode that I can't remember. That's ping pong. So if you're wondering how I did that, I just control, hold the control key down, hit left click, and it takes me to this. So in animation modes, we have one shot ping pong, which reverses it and then loop, which will loop it. So we're just gonna do one shot and then we tell it to play. And so that is probably the best way to animate things in a game because you have the interpolation uh, abilities and you also have it where it's probably a little bit more intuitive to move things relative to the position that it is now rather than having to set up all of the XYZ, but it really depends on what you wanna do. So those are the three ways to move a thing around with Verse. You have move to, teleport to, and the animation controller. Now, the last way to do things, which is a very normal way that everybody does, we take a look inside of my sequences folder. We've got a boat animation, and this is a sequence that literally just, if I play this along like this, just moves the boat. And this is very easy to do. I can actually just go ahead. We'll just put this back to the beginning here. We'll take the boat, we'll delete it. And I've made a sequence just simply by right-clicking cinematic level sequence, and that will make a sequence. So let's go back into here. And then we'll select our boat. We'll go to add, and then we'll actor to sequencer, add boat two, because this is boat number two in this game. And that will add it in here. Now you can't change anything yet. So we hit the plus, and then we'll go to transform. And then this transform listing thing will show up, and we want to change the location of our boat and it's at minus 4960. So let's set a keyframe by clicking this little diamond here like that. And then we'll go to the end, we'll just drag this over. And then I think the value is 2150. Yeah. And that will set another keyframe. So if we go ahead, we can scrub through here and see this, or we can just hit the space bar to play and see what it looks like. And this also does an ease in and an ease out, although you can change that by right clicking on the keyframe and changing how the interpolation works. Uh, the sequencer is very limited. I don't tend to use a sequencer much at all. It's, um, yeah, it's one of those things that you can use, but it doesn't have a lot of flexibility to it. I would encourage you to learn the ways to do it with Verse. You can set it up inside of the sequencer and see if everything looks good and then convert that to code. I think that's a very useful thing and one less device to have in your game. So the final thing to note about the sequencer that you don't want to forget is what you select here. And then you want to go into the details panel and inside of here, you want to force keep state. Otherwise it'll pop back to its original position. If you did force restore state, then it would put the boat back. If you did none, it also puts the boat back where it was. So we want to force keep state, which means that it's just going to do its animation and then it will just stay at the end of its animation. The boat will just stay over there unless you want it to come back. But keep that in mind if you're going to use a sequencer. Okay, that ends this tutorial. Hopefully that's been interesting and I will see you guys in the next one.